Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic and what I suspect might be a long video today. Uh, we're going to be having a look at a puzzle called Kashmir uh, by Leroy. Um, I think that's how you say the pseudonym anyway. It's Leroy, but spelt Le maybe Leroy. Um, so Leroy or Leroy, I hope I'm getting your, your pseudonym correctly pronounced there. Um, now, this puzzle has been recommended to us by none other than the great, great solver and setter Christoph Seliger, who described it as incredibly clever and original, but very, very difficult. I think it took Christoph two hours to solve it. And Christoph is is an absolutely awesome solver. <laughs> so this is, uh, I suspect, as I say, going to be a long one. Um, and I'm looking forward to trying it. It's just a killer Sudoku today with a, a single diagonal constraint. Um, so we shall see what we shall see. I've got a few things to mention though today. I have three birthdays um, to read out. The first is to Dave Pollock. Uh, you're right, your wife Rose got in touch with us, uh, Dave. I believe you're down there in Australia and I hope you have a super birthday. Um, and then we're going to cross the globe to Massachusetts in the US and I need to say a very happy birthday to Calliope and that's from uh, your friend Katie. I think you turned 49 today. That's, I'm not, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that but anyway I've, I've said it now. Um, anyway I hope you have a brilliant day um, too. Uh, and we didn't actually hear from the next person but I would of course like to say a very happy birthday to Elizabeth in Sandringham. Um, happy birthday ma'am. And um, yeah, now what else? So other things, tomorrow on the channel, tomorrow morning, we're going to be releasing um, my solve of Fistimafel's April Fool puzzle. Um, so that's been available to patrons on the channel for a couple of weeks now, um, but we're, we really are anxious to give that a wider audience so you can all enjoy the mischief that Fistimafel has been up to. Um, so look out for that around 10 o'clock tomorrow. And tomorrow afternoon, at 4 p.m. UK time, we are going to be uh, starting this new Kinlux Build Your Own Sudoku competition. Um, so if you're a patron of the channel, four o'clock tomorrow, you'll be able to access um, the first puzzle. Uh, well, you'll be able to access all the puzzles if you can solve them, but you'll have to do them in order. Um, so the first puzzle will go live four o'clock tomorrow. And yeah, we're, we're very, very excited to hear how some of you get on with that. I will, uh, you know, as I've said in, in the past uh, couple of days on the channel, um, that those puzzles are hard. They are hard, they're brilliant, but they are hard. So um, yeah, prepare your cold towels around your head, get your gin and tonics ready, and you'll be, you'll be all good. I'm sure loads of you will solve it correctly. Um, so yes, yeah, once you've finished all the puzzles, send us in what you're told to send us in at the end and you'll be in with a chance of a prize. And we'll also be giving a prize to the first correct entry that we receive. Um, now, is there anything else to mention? There probably is, but I'm going to forget to do it, aren't I? So let's get on with Kashmir and I'll read you the rules. They are as follows. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Digits may not repeat in cages and must sum to the number in the top left corner. So this is normal killer Sudoku rules. So those four cells sum to 25 uh, and you can't repeat a digit. So what you can't do is put nine there and nine there, for example, because although that doesn't break the rules of Sudoku, it breaks the rule about not repeating numbers in cages. Um, digits may not repeat along the indicated diagonal. So this diagonal here, but I think, I think it's only this one uh, must have one of the digits one to nine once each on it. Um, so do that as well and you'll be you'll get the puzzle right. Um, do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. And uh, now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Um, <laughs> let's get cracking, he says. Well, I actually, there are some things I can see here. There's two 22 cages. And I do know that a 22 cage in three cells can only be one of two things. It's always got a nine in it, and it's either going to be five, eight, nine, or six, seven, nine. So that's at least something. Um, now, we've got this weird, well, okay, it's gonna be something to do with these 25 cages, I think. They're too symmetrically disposed around this diagonal for that not to be deliberate. Uh, but, so is it something, hmm, I was wondering whether it's set related, 
So whether I have to highlight the diagonal here, so that's obviously one set of the digits, one to nine, and then box three and box seven together would be two sets of the digits, one to nine. So if we take out the common digits, which are in both sets, we can say that the difference between the orange cells and the, so we've got three orange cells now, and we've got 12 blue cells, and the diff and, and the difference, those, those nine different digits, have to be one set of the digits, one to nine. Um, and therefore, because of the secret, now the secret is something I only tell very special people, but if you're watching this video, you know you're one of my favorite people. Well, because of the secret, all, all the secret is that all, all of the digits in a Sudoku, the digits one to nine, if you add them up, you get 45. So the difference between the orange cells here and the blue cells is exactly equal to 45. But we nearly know the sum of the blue cells, don't we? We know the sum of the blue cells except for these four cells there, which we, if we knew what these four cells added up to, we would know the total of the blues of the blue cells because the blue cells, so the blue cells are going to be a hundred, four lots of twenty-five minus the red cells. So the blue cells are equal to a hundred minus the red cells. And the blue cells are equal to 45 more than the orange cells. Ooh, this is all getting confusing already. Um, let me just think about this. If I put low numbers into orange, let's just imagine this was a one, two, three, triple, that would add up to six. So then I would have, I would know the total of the blue cells was 45 plus six, which is 51. And that would mean, but I know that the, so if the blue cells only added up to 51, then the red cells would be adding up to 49. And that's too big, because even if I put nine in all of these cells, they only add up to 36. So actually these have to be bigger. All right, let's max these out. Let's do the opposite of that. So if that's seven, eight, nine, that's 24. Um, therefore the blue cells, add up to 69, i.e. 24 plus 45, which means that the red cells have to add up to 31, which, um, okay, well, the only thing I'm, the only thing I'm seeing as a result of this then is that the red cells always have a repeated digit in them, because if they didn't, the maximum they could be would be nine, eight, seven, six, and they would add up to 30. So, so the red cells have a repeat, but to the extent that the central cells are lower than 24, yeah, okay, well, actually, we have learned something, haven't we? Because the, the, the orange cells can be lower than 24, but they can't be much lower because the maximum I could make the red cells is 36, and we've just worked out the minimum I can make them is 31. So they are a number, they're either 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, or 36. Um, which means that ah, Okay, I don't know how important this is, but I can tell you that the red cells do not add up to 36. And that's because if they did, they would all be nines. And then I couldn't. Oh, no, actually, maybe this is wrong. Maybe I don't need a nine in the central bit. Ah, this is all getting very confusing. I mean, certainly none of those cells can now be a nine because in the 10 cage, I can't put a nine or an eight into this position because these two scales would have to be too low. I could put a seven here, but if these are all nine, then the maximum size of these three cells would be eight, seven, and six, which is 21. And what were we saying? 21, that would make the blue cells 
uh, equal 21 plus 45 which is 66 which would make these cells have to equal 34 but they would equal 36 yeah. um, hmm so sorry am I disproving that then am I showing that that's impossible if these are if these are so low that they only add up to 21 21 66 34 so if these add up to 21 I must have 34 here I think one of the reasons I'm getting confused is I'm looking at that saying that those don't add up to 21. They, they, they added up to 9 plus 8 plus 7, which is 24. So 24, 69, 31. So as, as we increase the value of this, we do decrease the value of these. So maybe I could actually go lower than this then. Maybe that's the point. So if I meant went something like 478, I don't think this, by the way, this is the way to do this puzzle. This is just playing around, trying to get a feel for how these numbers work. Um, 19, uh, 19, 59, 64, 36, yeah, that works. So the problem here is that these don't have to have a 9 in them at all. And therefore we can we can overload the wings of these 25 cages and force this downwards um, right hang on I think we're gonna have to abandon this this is not getting me as far as I think we need to get to so let's <laughs> let's reset somewhat and think again so what we learnt was that we do have to have a 9 in one of... No, did we learn we had to have a 9 in one of those or not? No, we had to have a repeat in one of those. We learnt we had to have a repeat in one of these. Yes, it doesn't have to be a 9. We, we, I think we, got, we said that they had to be a 31 at least, didn't we? These four cells. Maybe we keep the highlighting for these four cells. These have to add up to at least 31. And they have to have a repeated digit but that doesn't have to be a 9 and in fact in fact you could probably have four eights in there or three eights and a seven. Oh, good how on earth do you get I think I'm thinking about this all wrong I don't see how to get a meaningful restriction on these cages unless I know what's going in them. If I knew what these three cells added up to and it was, you know, let's say it was suitably high, then I could try and limit these, these wing cells. I'm sure this is there's something here. There's something to do with these 25s. They're too regularly dis displayed. So 20, we've got 100 there. So maybe I don't do set um, negative set. Maybe I do positive set. So those cells, let's highlight all of these cells. That's three set. No, it's not three sets of digits of one time. What am I talking about? It's not three sets of digits of one time, but I do know what the total is. The total of this is 45 for the diagonal plus 100 for the red cells, four lots of 45. Yeah, okay. So that's 145. The red cells add up to 145 minus box three and box seven. So minus 90, because each box individually will contain the digits 1 to 9 once each. So we end up with these cells adding up to 
um, 155, so 145 minus 90 is 55. So, oh, okay, so these cells add up to 55. Now, yes, okay, and this is a way that we could immediately have seen how this couldn't be a 1, 2, 3 triple, isn't it? Because if that's a 1, 2, 3 triple, we need these to be absolutely enormous. Really, all I've said, all I'm doing is restating what we already knew here. Um, but it is, it is slightly simpler in the sense that now, now I can immediately see the relationship between these three cells and these three cells, or for these four, these four sort of wing cells. So, so if these were four nines, that would be 36. These would add up to 19, I want to say. Yeah, 55 is where we're headed. 19 without using a nine. And that's totally possible. Uh, you can almost do it without using an eight as well, but not quite. Seven, six, and five is 18. I'm just trying to see whether I could. Ah, ah, no, hang on, hang on. I might be thinking about this all wrong. Right. No, right, okay, these can't be four nines, and for, for no other reason than that puts two nines on this diagonal. That's weird, right, okay. So this is not four nines, it's lower than that. And at least that then is starting to um, squeeze a little bit. The possible values because yeah hang on now let, now i'm wondering whether everything i've done has been gibberish or not yeah if this was maxed out that would be 24 then these would be 31 and that got us to the point where we knew there had to be a repeated digit and the maximum they can be is 36 so, yeah, so what i was doing before was correct but what i didn't manage to do before was to eliminate nine four nines now, now I can, because if you look at the diagonal, you can't, um, where do you put 9 in this box? It can't repeat in either of the 25 cages, there's already a 9 in them. So it gets planted on the diagonal in box 3, and exactly the same logic, it gets planted on the diagonal in box 7. So you'd have two 9s on this diagonal, which is only allowed to have one 9 on it. Um, so that is wrong. Let's get rid of all of this highlighting. Um, and therefore, the maximum size now of the red cells is 35. Now, and that means the minimum size of those cells is 20 now. So we have, cre we have crept this one up. Every time we can reduce the total for these four wing cells, we, we increase the total here. Now, this is where it's going to get impossible, though, because now, how do we limit this further? It's quite easy to see. Hmm, actually, it's not that easy to see, is it? So if you have, let's say this was three nines now. If these were three nines, I don't, the problem is I don't know where those three nines go. So three nines and a something. Something, that, let's just put eight in just for the sake of exposition. Now the problem is we don't know where these three nines would be. So we do know that would force a nine onto one of them. whether this was a pair of nines or this was a pair of nines and you would have to have a pair of nines um you're going to force a nine onto the diagonal either in box three or box seven and that means the maximum size you've got here now is 21 which would be eight seven six because you couldn't put a nine anywhere on this diagonal wherever these nines are because there, are, because there are three nines, you're always going to have a nine looking at both of those cells. Uh, 
Um, if there's a nine here. Well, that doesn't work, does it? So. Okay. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. I don't think this works. I don't think you can ever have three nines in, in these wing cells. I'm actually going to change the color of the wing cells. So I think there's a difference in the quality of these. We have to sort of think about these three cells separately from these cells here. I shouldn't use blue. I'm going to use orange. Um, there's something weird because you can see there's symmetry in the puzzle as regards um, as regards this 22 cage and this 22 cage around this diagonal. And what I'm what I'm thinking is that however I arrange three nines around these four cells, am I not going to stop you being able to put a nine in this cage? So let's let's take the arrangement we've got here for, as a starting point, which is one of the arrangements that's possible. The problem with this arrangement is because of the impact of this nine on this cage you end up having to put a nine here in box three and then you can't put a nine in that 22 cage where you must have a nine. Now obviously this might not be the arrangement of nines in the finished puzzle so let's but I think it's not going to matter because that's just a symmetric that this is just the same symmetrically isn't it? Yeah it's beautiful look this put, puts the nine in this 22 cage at the bottom which puts the nine in this cage here. And now there are two nines looking at all of the cells. These two nines here look at all the cells of that 22 cage. So that doesn't work. Right, I'm gonna do, I am gonna do this longhand. So now we've proved you can't have, you can't have the digit that's not nine in either of those. So if you, if we went with this arrangement, why does this fail? Ah. Uh, Ah, uh, maybe this. Oh, okay, hang on, let me just think about this because this is slightly different now. This is slightly different because now the, in the interaction of nine, uh, hang on a minute, let me think about this. Can we, can I, does this still work somehow? Can we still rule out all the nines we want to? I really hope so, but I'm struggling to see how quite how it works. Right, so I'm gonna to have to do this slowly. These two nines force a nine here, that's certainly true. There's a nine down here. So you end up with a nine up here. But is this broken or not? It's very difficult actually to put a nine into into this box as well, which is something I have not thought about at all. You'd have oh no, yeah, okay, maybe that's the point. Yeah, oh, I see. Yes, if you have nines in these two positions, because you have to have a nine in one of those two positions, and because you have this funny arrangement of tens and nines in the central box, you can't do it. There's, yeah, there's simply nowhere for a nine to go in this box now, is there? Let me just double check this. Um, no, it gets put into here, which it can't be. Can't be in this three cell 10 cage. So we've nearly done this then. And does, is that symmetrical? So this is the final arrangement of three nines that we've got now. And that doesn't work either, because again, these two nines pinch a nine in the middle box to one of those cells, can't be here, gets put into the 10 cage. So it isn't this one. I thought it was always gonna be this one and this one interacting, but it's not. It's a, it's a combination. So you can, where, where one of these is not the nine, 
it's the interaction of these cages together. Where one of these is not the nine, it's the central box. But we are getting somewhere, I think, because now I've managed to reduce the total of these orange cells um, down to not being able to be three nines in them. So now we're in two nine territory, which means that the maximum size of the orange cells is now 34, which would be two nines and two eights. Uh, which means 34, which means the minimum size of this is now 21. Which I only have to increase it once more and there will be a 9 in here. Uh, if we can get it to 22, then we know there will be a 9 in one of those two cells, which would be at least progress. So, so how do we get, how do we make any more progress with this? It feels quite difficult, doesn't it? Uh, given how much trouble it was to eliminate three nines, it feels like two nines is going to be even harder to eliminate. Although, having said that, the two nines could never be there in those two positions for exactly this, because look, that, that gives us a massive problem in the central box again. So if you, if you can't have two nines there, can you have two nines here? Probably is the answer. That forces a nine into this cell. Ah, good grief. Right, this is getting very interesting. This is a fascinating puzzle as well. I mean, I've never seen a killer that's doing this sort of logic. Now, nines in these positions. Why does this break? Well... It forces a nine here, which forces a nine here because you can't repeat a nine in a cage. It forces a nine here because you can't repeat a nine in a cage. And that 22 cage now has a problem. It can't have a nine in it anymore. So now the only way that two nines works is if they are wings of the same box, because we've ruled out that one. We've ruled out those two being the two nines. So we're either looking at these two or these two. Now, why does that break? The answer is, I don't know. Um, that would also force a nine here, mind you. And that would force a nine into this cell in box three. So you now couldn't have a nine on this diagonal in these three red cells. Oh no, hang on, that hang on, this is broken as well. Oh, this is really clever. Gosh, gosh, gosh. And this is symmetrical. So this is gonna work either way around. Look, this can't work. Forget this total, which is where I was about to go, but this can't work because if you do this, you forced to put it in the nine in this, can't be here, can't be here. So it has to go here. Once it's here, where do you put the nine in this box now? Can't repeat in a cage. And this is a nine, so it's not here, it's not here. So it gets pushed in the corner and you get two nines looking at that 22 cage. And of course, what's gonna happen if we try and put the nines that way instead, it's gonna be absolutely symmetrical logic. Boom, boom, we have to put a nine here. Now the nine has to go in the corner. You still can't put a nine in there. Isn't that clever? Wow. So that means that, that means I'm down to one nine maximum. I'm down to a maximum of one nines in the, one nine in the orange cells, which means that, which, which means I've got 22, haven't I? Nine plus three eights is um, 24, 33. 33 needs 22 to get to 55. Yes, there is a nine on this diagonal. There is a nine in one of those two squares for sure. And we're looking at either 22, 23, or 24 in the red cells now. I'm looking at a maximum of one nine in orange. So does there have to be one nine in orange or can we, can we go into sort of the, the realms of ludicrousness like four eights? Four eights are 32. 
So that would force these to be, well, that doesn't work straight away. I can actually see that immediately. If you go four eights, they are 32, which means these would be required to be 23 to make our 55 total work. And that means this is a six, eight, nine triple. But given you can't put eight here, you have to put eight either here or here. And there are eights looking at those cells, so that doesn't work. So four eights is impossible. So we'd have to be, so if there is no nine in any of the orange cells, we've got to be going to a total that is lower than 32. And that means that, right, so that means once, you, once you've made that decision, that if there is no nine in orange, you've got to go to a total that's, thir that's um, 32 or lower, this is now got, has now got to be 24, because the only way we could make 23 as the right number here without a 9 in one of these was using 4 eights because that's the highest we can get to without the 9. Now, what we don't know, though, is if we do go 7, 8, 9 here, and we, we've got one degree of freedom, so we could reduce one of these to a 7. It, doesn't, it still doesn't work. It still doesn't work, does it? Because now, now the maths works, these cells do add up to 55. But now I still can't put an 8 in here. Because it doesn't matter how I dispose the three 8s around the wing cells, I'm always going to be ruling out 8s from those two cells. Um, it, you know, it wouldn't matter if we swap this one with this one, it's still looking here. One of these must be an 8, one of these must be an 8, so those can never be 8, that can never be 8, so you can never put 7, 8, 9, triple in the middle. So now I'm concluding that there is a 9, there is a 9 not only in one of those two cells, there is a 9 in one of these cells, and only one, because we've ruled out 2, 9, 3, 9s and 4, 9s. And now, right, now, Right, what, what are we saying now? So we're now saying that the maximum size of the orange cells is nine plus three eighths. And I'm just gonna put that in for a moment, nine and three eighths. A nine and three eighths is 2433, 20, and that's putting 22 in here, which would have to be six, seven, nine, because you couldn't put an eight in either of those. And that would be true, actually, if you were trying to go with nine and three eights, because you would always have, you'd always have eights looking at these two cells, no matter how you dispose the eights. So, so this would have to be six, seven, nine. So this would be a six or a seven. Um, Okay, I'm just trying to see if I can see a problem with this immediately. You'd have to have an eight. If this was the arrangement of eights, you'd have to have an eight on that diagonal. Uh, let me just think about that a bit more. So we could, if these two added up to 16, we would know these cage cells would add up to 50 minus 16 which is 34 so these would be adding up to 11 and that one of them would have to be an 8 so this would be a 128 triple 128 679 345 uh, hang on I'm struggling here I can't see what's wrong with this Okay, all right, let's, let's, so if it's nine and three eights, I can't immediately disprove it. And the moment we make it less than this, we're increasing this, of course. So, is that helpful then? Because what I'm wondering is, if I drop 
if I drop one, this one further dip by one further digit, so I make it nine, nine two eighths and a seven. Let's make it nine two eighths and a seven. Then we know we're heading up towards a 32 total in the orange, which means we must have a 23 total in the red, which means we are looking at 689 there. The six would have to go in the middle, and we'd have to be looking, but we know one of, one of these eights would have to be a seven now. So if you were to try and do this, No, 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 this is nonsense. This is nonsense because uh, this is really, this is so brilliant as well. It's beautiful. I don't, I was thinking about whether I could do it by Sudoku and four, but I, oh, hang on. Hang on, no, this is more complicated than I was giving it credit for in my brain. I think I'm gonna need to think about this carefully. So if we do try and make this, nine double eight seven this clearly is broken you can't have the eights around the same box because if you do you have to put eight on the diagonal and that's going to break given you need an eight in one of these three cells so that's not what that's this cannot be correct and it would be the same obviously if you try and put the eights in these two cells so what you have to do in order to make this work still doesn't work but it's for a subtly different reason so if I try the seven here and put the eight here, so the eights are not flanking the same box, the problem with that is now eight looks at both of these wing cells and you can't help put eight in them anyway. So this is wrong. And that means that, that means means I'm getting very suspicious that this is in I, I think I think my belief now is that nine and three eighths is going to be correct but we still have to deal with the possibility of this central triple here being seven eight nine let's have a think about that then so if this is seven, eight, nine, we have to put the seven in the middle and we'd have to put eight nines in the edges. Now we know there's one nine in the orange. Um, and I can, I can either go, I can either go double seven, oh, I can either go double seven um, to because I've got to reduce these 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 numbers. I've got seven double eight nine. I have to reduce one of them by one, and it can't be the nine. So I could either go nine double eight six. Now let's just deal with that straight away because that's clearly very easy to disprove. Nine double eight six doesn't allow for an eight in these cells. Because either you're going to have the two eights around around the same box again and rule an eight from the diagonal, or have two eights on the diagonal, which won't work, or you're going to have this sort of arrangement where again the eights are ruled out. So the only way that this works, the only way is to have double seven. So we're going to have nine eight double seven. Let's check the maths works on this. Now we've got two lots of twenty four, which is forty eight plus seven is fifty five. So the maths works. And we have to find a way of disproving this because it's either this, either this is correct or it's nine triple eight is correct. Now, what we can say what we can say is that if we do try and do this combination, we can't do the double seven around the same box again. So what we can't do is put seven here um, and eight here, because again, that's gonna put a seven in one of these three cells and you're gonna have two sevens on the diagonal. So we've got, we've, if we do this, we have to offset the sevens. But 
but why is this broken? It's not easy to see, is it, why it's broken? You've got to put 7, 8 and 9. Right. It is broken. It is broken. It's broken, I think, because of the digit 1. I've got to be able to put... I've got to put 1 on this diagonal. Where am I going to put it? And the reason I ask that question is... Because I've got 7, 8, 9 on the diagonal in this iteration. Yeah, this doesn't work. Let's look at this box for a start. Where are we putting 9 in this box? And the answer is in the 7 cage. Where are we putting 7 in this box? And the answer is in the 9 cage. And now comes the question. Where are we putting 8 in this box? Because it's not on the diagonal. Now, whichever of these two cages, which already have, they both have 7 and 9 in them, whichever one I put the 8 into, it's going to reach a total of 24. And that means the other digit in that cage, and it's, so it's, it's going to be a 1. So there's either, whichever one I put the 8 in has a 1 in it, in this box. But that logic is absolutely symmetrical down here. Where do we put the 8 in this box? It can't go on the diagonal, there's already an 8 on it can't go in the same cage so it goes down here. Where does the 7 go? It's got to go in here. Now where does the 9 go in this box? It's not on the diagonal so it's in one cage that already has a 7 and an 8 in it so it reaches a 24 total. It needs a 1. You can't put a 1 on the diagonal and that is very very important because now I think I am happy to say that I now know, I may not know the order, but I can get rid of a lot of this pencil marking and say with certainty, I believe, that my orange cells here are a 9. I don't know where the 9 is going to go. I'm just going to put it here for as a pencil marker and 3 eighths. And now, uh, so now. Oh, and I, I worked out there was a 9 in one of those, didn't I? Because I, I worked out these had to add up to at least 22. Now we know what they add up to. They add up to, uh, we've got uh, 24, 33, 20, they do add up to 22. Right, yes, yes, there's 6, 7, 9. There's 6, 7, 9. Because, because there are three 8s in the wing cells, you've always got 8s looking at these two cells. And you can never put 8 in that red cell. So these add up to 22 in three cells without using eight. So they are six, seven, and nine, which means that this cell is not nine. And we've got a six or a seven here, which means the 10 cage has a one in it. Um, and it's either seven, one, two, or it's six, one, three. This is where it's going to get really tricky. And not that it hasn't been. I've had 45. How can it be 45 minutes? I only started it about five seconds ago. No. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, OK, right. So, I mean, the interesting thing about this is that obviously if this was the configuration, then you'd have to have an 8. In this position, wouldn't you? Let me just think about that. Um, 8, 8, pinching here, put plonks the 8 there. No, it can't go there because of that. Oh, no, so this is not, oh, sorry, right. Oh, so there's some, right, okay, so probably the next thing we need to think about is how do we put an 8 into box, into this box? Oh, this is weird. Um, 
And the, uh, yeah, and the tricky thing here is that obviously the nine is, is sort of floating. We don't know which one of these is the nine. But we can say with certainty that this, this configuration of eights doesn't work. Oh, no, no, no. Right, I can do better than this. I, I can actually do really, I can do a lot better than this. I am going to say that you, we, we know that, that, that three of these four cells is an eight. And I'm going to say that it's never those, that, that these two individually are never eights. And the reason is this. If these two are eights, eight in, eight in the middle box has to be, has to be in this cell. But we know that there's an 8 in one of those two cells. So if you put an 8 here, you couldn't put an 8 in either of those because it sees both because of the weird geometry. So this, this tells us that these two are not both 8s and therefore one of those is a 9. So this is an 8-9 pair and both of those are now 8s. And that tells us that the 8 in the middle box is in one of those two cells now. And that's because this cell sees both of these, one of which is an eight, so it's not that one. And this cell is ruled out. So one of these is an eight. I'd love to know whether this was 589 or 679 now. I think either is going to be quite interesting. If the, obviously, if this is 589, the 8 goes there. And that would have a lot of effects around the grid on 8s. In fact, that would force this to be 679, which is mildly interesting because it would have two eights looking at it. Um, okay. So do I need to, I'm wondering whether I should I should just sort of pencil mark these these digits in in some order so that I can see what happens to the diagonals. Uh, I think I don't know which of these. One of these is eight, one of these is nine. Whichever one is eight. Whichever of these is eight, it forces eight onto the diagonal in its in its box. And then we know that those three cells added up to eleven, didn't we? We did that maths before. Just let me double check that. So if that's eight, we know that the cage the cage cells therefore inside box seven add up to fifty minus sixteen, which is thirty-four. We know the whole box adds to forty-five, so those must add up to eleven and include an eight. And therefore they are 1, 2, and 8. So this would be 1, 2, and 8. And by Sudoku, that would be 3, 4, and 5. And this would be a 9. So does that, presumably that does add up. We'd have 17, 33 here. Yeah, 33 plus 12 is 45. So that does work. We'd have to have a 9 in this cage. Um, and that 9 would mean that we would need another eight into this cage, which could be one seven or two six. We'd have to. Yes, okay, and that makes sense because the eight's gonna come down here. And in both cases, we just need eight more. Right. Ah, ah, right, here is something small. I'm not sure how. I'm just going to leave the. Well, am I going to leave these in? I'll leave these in for a moment. But look, look, watch this. Watch the effect of this nine on this box, on this cage. If that's nine, and we don't know it is, but if it was nine, nine in the middle box is there. And both of these little wing cells get clipped by that. Look. 
so we'd have to put 9 in there in the 22 cage. But the logic is symmetrical. If we change this to being a 9, then that makes that a 9, and the wing cells are still both seen. So actually, whichever way round these are, the 9 in this 22 cage goes exactly there. And that... Oh, this is beautiful. Right, that's so beautiful. Because now these can't be... Neither of those can be 8s. Because we do know for sure there are two 8s in those squares. So this is uh, 6, 7, 9. That's, that's got to be mighty. He says, and then can't see why. I've got to be careful here as well because I don't know that these are in this order. So I don't, and I therefore I don't know that this is one two eight. The one two eight could be up there. So we, we've got to be a bit circumspect in terms of. But this nine is solid. That is solid. The six seven is solid. So this cage now is not four nine. But it could still be 5, 8, I believe, because we could have an 8 here and a 5 above it. So it's either 8, 5 or 6, 7. Um, okay. Right, here is something else. This 10 cage is now interesting as well. Yeah, okay, I'm going to have to I'm going to have to go back, I think. I'm going to I'm going to change these two. I'm going to change those to an 8 9 because I don't know the order. Um, do I want to get rid of these? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm just I'm going to just going to highlight those just for a second to indicate circumspectness. But this, the logic I'm thinking about here is not related to these. It's related to this 10 cage. Now a 10 cage, because it can't have a 5 in it, it's like a German whisper. It's got to have a high digit and a low digit in it. Therefore, one of the, these two digits is a 6, 7, 8 or 9. It's not an 8 actually, but one of the digits is high. And therefore in this column, there are four high digits. So how could this be an 8? If that's an 8, Oh, this is going to tell me what these are. If, if, if this is an 8, it's a fifth high digit in this column. And that doesn't work. So that's an 8. And that means if this is an 8, that's a 9. And that means this is an 8. And that, ah, and that, and that means we uncircumspect our graynesses. Because, because now 8 is definitely on this diagonal in this box. So that is 1, 2, 8. Which means this is 3, 4, 5. And this must matter. Why does this matter? So now I've got to put nine in there. I've got to put eight in here. That's that's both. That's solid. Nine is not there. Look by Sudoku. So nine is not here by Sudoku. Oh, nine in the central box gets placed exactly there. So these. Maybe we get rid of the rednesses now. Um, so now we get a six, seven pair here, a six, seven pair here. Oh, six, seven, all of the high digits are used in row four now. Ah, aha, yes, 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 yes. Eight is not there. So eight is in this domino, which means eight is not there, which means my 13 cage is now a six, seven cage. Like that's probably doing something down here. Six, seven. Ah, um, ah, ah, this 10 cage now hasn't got eight or nine in it. So that's got to have a six or a seven in it and a three or a four in it, depending on, obviously if it's seven, it needs to be seven, three. If it's six, it needs to be six, four. So one in this column is now restricted to one of two places because we can, we know there's a one in this 10 cage. Now, do we... 
this is not an 8 by Sudoku. So 8, yeah, 8 in box 1 is mildly restricted. Look, it can't go there because of this 8, so it must be in one of those two cells. 8's in one of three places in box 6. 9, 9, 9. Oh, bobbins, I think we're getting stuck. Um, if you're stuck, remember Sudoku. So <laughs> I'm trying, to, I really am trying to do Sudoku. Um, six. I can see one of these two squares is a six or a seven because of this six, seven interacting with this pair here. Oh, I'll tell you something that's interesting. Yes. Yeah, look, in this row, I've got six, seven, and nine. And in this column, I've got six, seven, and nine. So where does six, seven, and nine go in column two? They can't go here. They can't go in those cells. They can't go there, and they can't go there. So they only have three options. So that is six, seven, and nine. That's surely important somehow. Um, if, oh, look at that. That would be very interesting. Just look, if that's a six, seven, I'd have six, seven, six, seven. I'd have to, this square would have to be a six or a seven. And this nine cage would have to contain a six or a seven. Um, okay. Okay, how do we do this then? We shall argue that. I don't know. Six, seven in box three. Can't go in those cells. Now we can't, yeah, you can't put six and seven in this 25 cage along with nine, because then this cage will add up to 30. It will have a nine, an eight, a six, and a seven in it. So the six and seven in this box, in this cage, and there must be one of them, must be exactly there. So that's a six or a seven. Which, oh, this is gorgeous, right. So this is not six or seven. There's a six, seven pair in that row. So this is three or four, which means that this is six or seven. So is this about colouring sixes and sevens is now my question. I'm just going to try that for a moment. I'm going to get rid of my orange nisses. Uh, let's get rid of orange nisses and try and... Where should we start with this? Let's try start with that one. Uh, although maybe I'll use purple. I'll use purple and green. So purple and green. So this is now green. That's purple through the medium of the cage. So this is now green, which means this is now purple. So this is purple. So there's a green in one of those two cells. Ah, ah, yeah, look, I've got purple in one of those. So this is so this is six, seven, and then if it's seven, it's two, if it's six, it's three. So this is two, three, six, seven. Um, hmm. Okay. Has this just died, has it? That's such a shame. Oh, do I know what this is? So if this was six, seven, nine, that would have to be purple. And there would be a green in one of these two cells. But that actually looks quite likely. Um, sorry. Sorry if you're all seeing this and it's obvious, but I'm not spotting how to do this. Oh, that's, that's purple. 
sorry I didn't see this one was purple so that means I've got a purple in one of those three cells bobbins uh, love to know if this was if this was green because if this was green I'd get a green here and then I would rule out six and then I would know the nature of this why is that green if that's a nine this becomes a six seven pair ah Ah, that's wrong. That's aha. Right. This is important. This is important. This this cannot be a nine, because then I have the question. Well, actually, I can see that the question becomes: Where does nine go in box seven? And the answer is in a cage along with a six or a seven and an eight. Well, that means that cage is adding up to either 23 or 24 with one more digit to go, which will have to be a 1 or a 2 to get to 25, but 1 or 2 cannot go in the cage because 1 or 2 are here. So you can't, you can't be putting 9s into one of these cages and a 6 and a 7 because of the 1, 2, 8 nature of the diagonal. So that's not a 9 which means that's a six or a seven, which is what I wanted, because now I've got nine in one of these two cells down here. But more importantly, that becomes green, that becomes green. And now look, this column has a six, seven pair in it looking at here. So if we want to make this a six, seven, nine, um, 22 cage, this cell has to be Schrodinger. It's got to be simultaneously green and purple, and that's, that's not gonna work. So this is five, eight, nine which means that's not eight and that's not nine. Oh, well, that's mildly interesting actually, because the, it, now the eight in this cage has to be in the bottom row, look. So it's looking at that cell. So that cell becomes an eight in box seven, which means that cell becomes an eight in box one. So now, oh, oh no. And, and now, look, we've got a sort of X-wing on eights in boxes three and nine. The eights are locked into columns eight and nine. So we ask where the eight goes in column seven. Not here, not here, not here, not here, must be there. So now we've done seven of the eights and we've got to do two more. And, and, do we, oh, hang on, do we do any better in terms of our purplage or our greenage? Hmm, maybe not. Um... Green has to go down here, but we don't know which cell it's in. We do know, ah, yeah, 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 this is, it keeps getting, this is one of the most remarkable killer Sudokus I've ever done in my life. Leroy, Leroy, you, this is just, every single deduction is absolutely beautiful. Look at this one. So I know there's a green here now. Well, now I can use that logic again about not putting nine and eight with a six or a seven in a 25 cage here. If this is a nine, it joins its friend a six or seven, and I'm gonna to have to put a one or a two in this cage to make it add up to 25. So that cannot be a nine. And not only does that mean I get to place the nine here, which might be interesting, uh, although it doesn't seem to be. But the m much more interesting thing, I think, is that this cell has now become a six or a seven, and therefore it's purple. 
And not only that, I now know the total of this, this box. It's got eight, it's got a six, seven pair in it. That's 21, so there is a four in one of those. So this is four, six, seven. And this is three, five to complete the box. Nine, nine can just be placed in box number four by Sudoku. These squares have got to be one, two, and four, I want to say. Four is in one of those cells. That seems a bit desperate. To I'm going to do it. <laughs> I am desperate. Uh, one of those is a four. Um, and... Hmm, okay. One, two, three, and five up here. Maybe I'll also pencil mark that just in the interests of desperation. Ew, no, that doesn't look too clever actually, does it? So, I feel like I should be able to, oh no, it's funny. I, I thought for some reason I felt like I have more nines in my grid, but I actually don't have very many. Uh, purple. Right, purple in this box is now a little bit restricted. It's in one of two places. One of which would be in a nine cage where it cannot go. It cannot go. Oh, that's so beautiful. That is so beautiful. Right, watch this. How could this be a purple? Uh, and the answer is it can't be. Because if that's purple, remember there's a purple nine cage here. So imagine this was seven and purple was a seven. Then we would know this was a two seven pair. But that makes this a two because it's a nine cage as well as this one. These two can't be the same because they share a row in this, in this, this little proximity here. Oh, that's lovely. It's just lovely. And that means that that's got to be, that's got to be the purple which means there's a purple in one of those cells. Um, no, I don't believe it. That had to be important. Oh, no, 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 you rotten, rotten thing. No. It's not doing anything. It's literally doing, or it's, it's giving me that digit. Which, well, hasn't even given me the digit. It's given me that color for that cell. Green is in one of those. Oh, I don't believe it. And that is why you fail. Um. Right, right, but at least that thought is sensible, isn't it? Ah, this might have been available for ages. Has this been available for ages? That is my new question of the moment. The answer to that is maybe. Right, I'm sorry if you've all been spotting this, but this is still beautiful, it's absolutely beautiful. Let us think about the nature of this 10 cage. Now this 10 cage is very special in this puzzle because it has a one in it and it has a purple in it. Therefore, it has the complement to the purple in there, in it, it must do, because, it, because its other two cells that are not the one are a purple and another digit that add up to nine, just like this cage. So, this, the, so the, the low digit in this cage appears in this 10 cage and therefore it goes there so that's got to be the one that's what that's telling us and this is a two or a three and it's the same as whatever goes in there which i don't really have a good way of showing this but um let's give that blue but that could be blue 
this one is doing virtually oh one is getting pushed up there one is not here anymore that's really not done as much as I was hoping either um, this is not the one either so if Wow, still it resists. One hour, 10 minutes. This must be the fastest, that's the fastest one hour, 10 minutes that's ever been in the history of the universe, I think. So, so the only cage that we've not really used now is this one. Ah, yeah, okay. Let's have a look at this cage. It's not got six or seven in it. It's not got one or eight in it. So it is a four or five cage. That's interesting. At least it would be if I could see what that meant. Oh no, there's still two places for four in this row. And there's still two places for five. Ah... Uh. Okay. I don't know what to do. Um, okay, so there is a five up here in one of those cells. That doesn't help me. I know nothing about fives in the whole puzzle. Um, Right, okay, here is here is a way that we can make a deduction. This is not a five. This is not a five, because if it's a five, I have to put four in one of those cells. And what does that do to that 10 domino? Well, it does two things that are very important and contradictory. It firstly forces this to be a three. And that forces this to be a seven. And now that means that this, this little digit here is the 7, and it's going to have to have a partner of a 2 here, because we know these two add up to 9. But now I can't put 3 in this box anywhere, because there's a 3 here, it needs to go here, at the same time this needs to be a 7, and this cage doesn't add up to the right number. So that all fails, and falls flat on its face. Um, so that's got to be a 4, and that's got to be a 5. And that means that's a five and that's a three. And that might do something. Oh, right. No, that has done something to that digit, which has become a two. Which just means that's a one and that's a two and that's a four. Okay, this might be good. This might be good. So these squares now are no longer twos. Um, one of those two squares is a four. Oh, come on, <laughs> please. This two is ruling out two seven from that set. So now we know this is three six. So therefore we know this is three six. So we know in other words that purple is six and blue is three. And therefore all of the, well, I'm gonna get into trouble if I do the double clickage. So I'm going to do it this way. These all become six, and therefore these all become seven. And that one becomes a seven, and there's a seven up here. Oh, so now, so now we've got, in this cage, I've got eight, seven, and nine, so I must have a one in there as well. So that's a one, seven, nine triple. That's not seven, that's not nine. That one seems to be able to be whatever it wants to be. And these two squares, therefore, are a two and an eight. And that does add to 25, so that does seem sensible. So this is two eight. Um, these two squares have got to be two and five, I want to say. This has got to be a four, I suppose, to make the 10 cage work, so that might help. That's no longer a four. That's no longer a four. 
um, this is a three six pair so that's a five which does a little bit this is now a one or a three I think just to complete box four I'm trying not to get excited here <laughs> um, Okay, let's keep going down here then. We need ones and threes into the, oh yeah, one one in the corner here. Let's place this one and place this three. So one ah oh that's almost lovely. One is in this domino in box nine, and one is in this triomino in box three. And that tells us that one must be in one of these two cells in box six because it must appear somewhere in column nine okay um <laughs> please please give up now you have you have put up the most almighty fight puzzle i respect you more than i can say but i would now like you to give up and let me win that's a one or a two that's a one two or a nine Ah, no, 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 no. This square here actually sees 9 and 2, so that's a 1, actually. Maybe that's important. Or not. Um, okay, so if we look along this row, we need 3s, 4s, and 5s. So this is 3 or 5, and this is 3, 4, or 5. Bother, bother, bother. Oh, that 3 is looking at this 3-1 pair. That's nice. So that's 3. That's 1. This is a 2-3 pair. That's not 3. Oh, come on. Uh, that, this 1 is putting a 1 here. So this is now a 2 or a 5 only. There's probably some way we can resolve that, but I don't know what it is. Um, what about those squares then? They're 2s, 4s, or 5s. Ah, no, <laughs> I was about to get excited, and that was wrong of me. Um, no, okay, I'm still not seeing it, am I? I'd love to know how to resolve this 589 in the bottom. That must be nearly done now. Problem is, I don't seem to have, know enough about nines to resolve it. No, okay, I can't see how to do that. Uh, have we done everything we can with the diagonal? I think we've done most things. Right, so these squares are one, four, five, triple. That's not four. And that should be nice, why? <laughs> um, right, here's something. Here is something. I've just seen I've got threes here, so that's a one, three pair. That is important, believe it or not. Oh, five here. That's important as well. Nine goes there. So this is five eight, which does absolutely El Zippo. I don't believe it. Oh, good. Okay, well anyway, I've spotted something else. These these are both this is a one three pair. So three is a lining look in column seven and eight. And we can ask where three goes in this column. And it's going to have to go in exactly this cell, which means we know that cell, and we know that cell, which means we know that cell, we know this cell, we know this cell, we know that cell. Then we know that cell. We get a 1, 7 pair at the top of the grid. The 3 disambiguates the 3 and the 2 over here, so that becomes 9. This becomes 2. I'm getting very excited now. Now that's a 9 by Sudoku. This is a 7 for 4 pair. So I've got a four, oh no, okay, for a four, seven pair and a one, three pair. These two squares here are, ah, we can do that. That's five, that's two. Um, this is not five. How? Resolve, <laughs> come on. Uh, what does this highlighting mean? Oh, it's about the six. Okay, there's a six in one of these two cells. five here there we go so that's five that's eight that's eight that's two that's four um 
<laughs> no. Oh, come on. You rotten thing. 1, 3, 6, and 7. So this square here is apparently a 6 or a 7. All right, we'll do it this way then. Oh, this 5. Yeah, okay. That's 2. That's 5. That's 5. That's 2. So this cell is itself a 4. 4, 7. 4, 7. And now this square has magic to work. That's a 7. So that's a 7. That's a 1. That's a 6. That's a 6. That's a 3. That's a 3. That's a 1. That's a 2. Yes. Oh, gosh. <laughs> wow. Oh, my goodness me. That is one of the hardest killer Zodokus I've ever seen in my life and one of the most absolutely brilliant Leroy Leroy take a huge bow uh, in fact we should all be genuflecting before you frankly because that is that was magnificent what ideas there were in here there may have been I'm wondering now a, a cleaner way of understanding how these 25s interact with this diagonal so the way I did it after getting completely uh, red herringed to start with was was to sort of try and whittle down the wing cells by asking how many nines there were and I have a feeling there might be some mathematical trick we could have done that would have allowed us to understand that a bit more cl clearly or quickly but it was so clever the way the way you had to think about not only the maths and the geometry but also the Sudoku implications of how these three cells interact with these wing cells. It was absolutely critical. And what's absolutely amazing as well is that even after you've done all that, even after we've done all of that amazing stuff to, to learn about how these cells work together, there was still incredible Sudoku trickery that we had to do from there on in. I mean, it's a, it's a magnificent puzzle. It really is. I wonder why it's called Kashmir. Um, I don't know, but I do hope um, Leroy watches this, and I'd love to know more about the sort of how how this was constructed. Please make make a make us make a how I set Kashmir video, Leroy. We would love to see it. Um, thanks so much for watching. If you're still with me now, I'd love to know how you got on with the puzzle. I do enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.